doing good. How are you? Uh, congratulations on your nomination. Thank you. Uh, this is the second year around you've been nominated. Is there a different feeling to it this year? Well, this year, I guess I was in attendance, so it feels a little bit more real. I mean, typically we do things that we're, like, back in Saskatchewan and we're getting text messages and things like that. So it was kind of cool to, like, have it unveiled and, like, not knowing whether or not we were being nominated or not. So that was really exciting. And you've had a wild stretch the last, I don't know, how many years is it now? Like a year or two? Well, the last two years, I guess, have probably been the crazy ones. So have you found that you've gotten a different perspective on the way the music industry works by being able to take advantage of opportunities and, you know, have that exposure almost right out of the gate? I mean, yeah, I mean, we spent a lot of years, you know, being a band and not being able to take advantage of the music industry in some ways, so it's cool to kind of see how everything works and, uh, and yeah, take advantage of those. Having people representing us, uh, you know, because for many years we were spending time representing ourselves, so that was, uh, that's definitely a, a plus now. Was it challenging kind of being thrust into a spotlight the way you guys were? You know what? I, it was it, well, it was and it wasn't. It's very exhausting a lot of the time, but I think the biggest thing is that we've done it for so many years that it felt like natural to us. I think it would have been more difficult had we just been a brand new band and had to like get along with each other and spend every waking hour with each other. Yeah, we kind of got all the like personal stuff out of the way before we uh, got thrust in there, so that was good. And now you probably get this question a lot, but was there, I guess, a pressure you'd never experienced before? Um, a pressure we never experienced before? I think probably the biggest one is just uh, a lot of the shows we play had no expectations to them. It was like, you know, just go out and play. Whereas once we kind of got thrust in the spotlight, you realize there's a lot more eyes on you and a lot more pressure to perform and to execute. So I think for us, that might have been a pressure that we weren't used to initially because we're spending so much time playing shows to next to nobody or only a handful of people. Right, now, the, now you obviously had the opportunity to, to really go all out with the new album again. Patrick and the Black Keys to come in and have a white label behind you. Was that a different experience compared to what you guys have been used to when it comes to recording and getting your music out? Yeah, well, I mean, our last album before that was recorded in a house in Saskatoon, so it was very different, but it wasn't it wasn't weird in the sense, I mean, obviously Pat is an artist, and he understands you know, what it's like to be in that position, and we have really good people around us. It didn't feel like, a lot of people are like, you know, you're on a major label, it's not going to change things, and I really didn't feel like it necessarily did. I felt like we still had a lot of autonomy and things like that, which are really important, obviously, being an artist. Now, obviously, today you've been nominated for the album, and people have shown what they think about the album. How do you feel about it a little like my our own album yeah. I feel good about it I think that like obviously uh, it, it was made in a studio it wasn't like our last album that was made in like a house and it's very like organic sounding but you know I think we maintain a lot of our sensibilities that we have uh, as a band and, and didn't necessarily change our sound in order to to be on a major label or be more successful we wanted to continue doing making the music that we wanted to make so that's what we did and now I know you toured with John Fogarty a little bit yeah it was last year at the Junos is what we were doing uh, we were touring with John Fogarty in Australia so how was that it was, oh my god it, I mean obviously we're I mean listen to any of our music we're huge uh, Creedence fans but it was amazing that man is like for an, an older guy he's still got his voice he's still got like his guitar chops and he can put on a really damn good show and I think it was a pretty big honor not only to spend a little bit of time with him but um, being able to see him every night and seeing you know how like a 60 something year old guy can really go out and, and perform like he's 24 again it, it's, it's really cool so, so I guess you learned like over the test of time you can still keep going no matter what what's that? Sir? Through Fogarty, I guess you learned a lot, like a little longevity and how you can just Yeah, I mean, the one thing is, I mean, his voice sounds as good as it did when he was like 24 years old, so I think that's the one secret is figuring out how to, like, still maintain because a lot of people lose their voice and uh, lose their mojo, I suppose. Right. So, so what's next for you guys? Um, right before the Junos, we're going to be doing a European, uh, like a three and a half week European tour, right. flying back basically from Europe to Regina. Uh, and then, you know, continuing festivals this summer as well as, you know, touring in the U.S., in, more in Europe and in uh, Canada as well. So what's it like going home for this? It's very cool. I mean, we're, we're very, you know, I don't know if it's patriotic works for your own province, if that technically makes sense. To that. But we're like, we love where we're from and we're very proud of where we're from. So it's very exciting to, you know, for the Junos to be coming back and to be representing the, you know, in nominations, representing the province is, is really exciting for us. Cool. Thanks, Ryan. Yeah, no problem. Thank you.